Welcome to Thursday's Fish Pal Live. Um, if you're coming onto the feed, come and say hello, um, because today we are talking all about the River Dee. And my guests today, I am just adding them into the stream. I'm going to be taking them off the mic. Um, I've got Ross McDonald from the River Dee. Hello, Ross. Good afternoon, Anne. How are we doing? I'm doing well, thank you. And we've also got Colleen, who is the manager of Summer's Fishing Tackle. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Everybody who is viewing this feed, just come and say hello. Um, if you've got questions to ask Colleen or Ross, please just pop them in the feed and we'll actually ask those questions. And along the bottom, you'll see a ticker tape that says about the River D buffs. You can purchase them via the link, which is the River D Trust store. And at our background today, you'll see along, oh, along the back, there is the these beautiful, beautiful buffs that we're going to be talking about a little bit later with Ross that are fun raising to uh well raising money for the river d and good morning gavin brown it's nice that you've got you've joining us all the way from the scottish borders now ross how many weeks is it before the season starts oh too many uh, too many what we're just under eight weeks you know uh oh, looking forward to it you know but by the time we get to september i think we're all a bit tired of the fishing season and then two weeks after we close we're all champing at the bit to get back out so uh, i'm willing to go i can't wait to get back out and i know you colin as well is that that is your preferred um species salmon isn't it for me personally yes yeah salmon all the way ross um Anybody watching this today that's um, that's never come and fished the River Dee before, tell us a little bit about the river, please. Well, the, our wonderful little river uh, up here in Aberdeenshire uh, is about 90 miles long and uh, we, we get our fishing season on the 1st of February. And, uh, you know, traditionally, you know, the Dee's been, has been known for, it, for its spring fishing uh, and there's every chance of catching an opening day fish on the fly uh, on February the 1st. Uh, so that early part of the season, uh, sometimes laughingly called spring fishing, February, March, uh, is, uh, uh, that's when the hardcore anglers come out, you know, the weather conditions are a bit colder, the water levels are a bit higher, uh, it's a bit more challenging, but it's a, it's, it's a really wonderful time of the year to be out in the river. Um, and, and, and with reference to availability on the site, Ross, for spring fishing, um, yeah. I know that owners are putting availability on at the moment. Well, what kind of prices are people looking at to go uh, fishing at springtime? Well, on the, certainly in fe February, March, uh, as it starts around £30, you know, for beach down like Ardo. But then you, you'll get you'll get good quality fishing and, and uh, uh, some of the other beats, you know, Park and Comet and Carlogie have all got, you know, first week of February fishing available for, you know, roughly sixty pounds, which is which is not it was not bad uh, value, I think. Uh, yeah. So you know, the early the early seasons of time, you know, you'll you'll definitely get, uh, you know, uh, good prices, good value, I think. Uh, yeah, definitely, and there's some there's some some interesting beats on the on the site at the moment as well. You know, so there's lots there's lots to choose from. Yeah, and I'm I'm going I'm going to bring Colin in here as well. Colin, tell us a little bit about uh, what kind of tackle we need for early season fishing on the River Dee. Uh, I would recommend a fourteen foot, fifteen foot rod, uh, double hander. Um, with the lines these days, you can get away with a fourteen foot rod most of the year. To be honest, um, depends on your ability whether you go a floating line with sink tips or a full sinking line, just, it all depends on, you know, people's um, experience and abilities to cast sinking lines, because they can be tricky. Yes, yes. And, and, and also as well as that, that, just tell the listeners uh, and people who are actually watching this on the live, um, whereabouts you are, where is Summer's Fishing Tackle? Based in the heart of Aberdeen city centre, um, we're about half a mile from um, the mouth of the D, mm -hmm. and probably about a mile from the mouth of the Don. So right in the middle between the two the two rivers. Um, yeah, it's the the D's just on our 
on our doorstep. So um, the association, Water, the Aberdeen District Angling Association has uh, the first uh, about four or five miles, I think, of, this, of the D. And then it runs into um, further upstream from there. Fantastic. And um, um, Ross, um, with reference to, I'm going to pull you across. You've obviously noticed I've actually got a, a new bit of kit on this um, on this live. I can move people around. Yeah. Um, Ross, anglers, because I, I, we've just had Philippa Haight come on. Um, you are known as Mr. Fly. You write regular for the Trout and Salmon magazine. Um, just tell the the, the, view, the viewers a little bit about the, the flies that you've designed and uh, and why did you design them? Well, I've designed a few uh, shrimp flies, as uh, most people will know, um, uh, quite a while ago now, actually, they've been around a while. Uh, and funnily enough, you know, part of the inspiration for for you know things like park shrimp and Calvin shrimp was uh, going through the fly tying section at Colin Shop in summers. Uh, they always had a, a a really exciting range of material. Uh, so I used to I used to wander about that shop endlessly, didn't I, Colin? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so when they started things like you know when they started the park shrimp cone heads and. Uh, and flies of that style, you know, they they, they had the they had the stock of humor materials and that in the shop. So uh, I think uh, you know, Summers is definitely a place to be for some fly tying materials, and that, that you know it served me well. Uh, so you know, made the park shrimp uh, and Calvin shrimp, and uh, these are quite well known flies. Uh, you can use them in the early season as well. You know, sort of three quarter inch tube, I think, for for a park shrimp. Uh, I think, I think most people in the, in the early early part of the season on the D would fish a willy gun, a black and yellow, uh, or, a, or a D monkey. I mean, if you're going to just take, you know, three patterns, I would, I would say take those, um, you know, sort of at the inch, inch and a half tubes and, and monkeys with, you know, wings up to three, four inches. Uh, so those are the ones that definitely catch the fish in the early season. And, you know, and shrimp flies and other styles of flies like stoats and that come into their own, you know, as the water warms up a bit later, you know, as we move into sort of April and, and so on, you know, and you need to start fishing these, these style of flies on hooks. And and the thing is, Ross, and 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 also Colleen, um, with reference to the the flies, and I'm gonna pull Colleen across. In the, the there seems to be a, a a fashion at the moment for people to be fishing tube flies. Tube flies seem to be because I you know Gavin Brown, um, creator of the, the the Junction Shrimp, Gav's dog, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is he's when I see Gav, he's always tying tubes. Is this the fashion now? Tube flies. I would say so. Yeah, definitely. Certainly, you can obviously tubes. Fly tying materials have come on leaps and bounds over the years with uh, aluminium, you know, small micro tubes, you know, you can put cone heads on, plastic tubes. The materials is endless these days. And, you know, again, with when the Scandinavians came over, they introduced a new style of fishing with tube flies and working the fly. Whereas with a traditional double, you're just letting it swing. Mm -hmm. So, I think more people are tending to work the fly a bit more, which they can get, they can use better with a tube fly as opposed to a double, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And Ross, um, the Scandinavians, um, uh, we've got Charlie Jeffrey. He says not long until opening day on Embry, always a highlight in the season. Yeah. Everybody who fishes the D, it is a highlight in their year to actually go to the D. But the, 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 when I was last on the on the river, the um the number of Scandinavians that absolutely love the D. It it really is a a, a great um tourist uh, plus, isn't it? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. You know, I, I mean one thing about about Anglin in, in terms of the wider local economy uh, is that um you know it it brings people into D side uh, and what they call the, the shoulder periods of the, the tourists. Uh, 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 sector. So February, March is not a time when most people would think to come to Aberdeenshire for a sunny holiday. But, you know, we can get them up here to, to, to wet a line on the D. So, uh, yeah, we're always uh, we're always keen to get new people up here to try it. 
Yeah. And and the Scandinavians, the one thing that um when I was there, you there was like this witching, bewitching hour on the D, and it was like seven o'clock at night. And and the whole river just had this different feel about it. And that's when all the Scandinavians were just they were out and they fish so hard and and they just cover the water fabulously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some very, very good anglers come over here, yeah. and you know, they've been part of the fabric on on uh, on D side for you know twenty twenty five years. You know, and as Colin mentioned there about you know the fly tying and their influence here. You know, they've they've, uh, they've they've played a big part. You know, things like the D monkey was created by a Danish guy. You know, yeah. uh, and you know, shooting heads and different styles of fishing sunk lines. You know, when Colin mentioned sunk lines, you know, now that we've got shooting heads. Uh, it's much much easier to fish sinking gear now than it was 20 years ago when it, you know, you had a 16 foot rod and a wet sail too, you know, which is quite a, quite a challenge, uh, you know. So it's much much easier to fish uh, sunk line stuff than, than it was uh, a couple of decades ago, and you know, and, and, the, and the Scandinavian anglers certainly contributed to that style of fishing. And Colleen, um, with reference to rods as well, um, you stock a, a fabulous selection of rods. Um, wh what kind of rods are, have been people been buying this year? Oh, from Shakespeare to, to Sage, mm -hmm. you know, and everything in between, whether it's Daiwa, Greys, Hardy, you know, some Luke rods. Yeah, just yeah. everything and anything. Um and each rod's different to the, each person that's using it. Not one rod suits everyone. Yeah. You know, it's like cars. Everyone's yeah. different. So if I came into your shop and said, Colleen, I, I've seen the Mortimer and White House show and I want to take up salmon fishing, what would you say? Buy a hardy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Uh, you know, just well, first of all, we've got to start where you're going to fish, you know, yeah. which river, because if it's a dawn, you don't really need a 14 foot or the Ithin, which is a bit smaller still. So if it's going to be predominantly D, you go, you know, whether a 13 or 14 for yourself, um, a nice, easy, light, light setup for yourself. So you're not getting tired after, you know, two hours fishing. You want to fish for the full duration. So it's got to be a nice easy setup to use so mm -hmm. 13 foot a nice rio shooting head line you know integrated line um you know something along that lines perfect starting off go for a size 10 size well depends on water height but a double to start with because you're not want to hook yourself around the ears or head or jacket or somebody else for that matter so <clears throat> something nice and easy to, to start with and and can because because there'll be people watching this who want to try salmon fishing. How expensive is the equipment to try salmon fishing? Not expensive. Okay. You can get a full full outfit. We do a full outfit for about one hundred and sixty pounds. Rod, reel, line, all set up, ready to go. And everybody, if you've got any uh, wives, girlfriends or partners that want to try fishing as well, you also stock ladies clothing as well. Yes, yes we do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Because not every shop stocks ladies clothing. So uh, huge thank you for that. So, Ross, I, so I've, I've got my kit. I am ready to go. Tell us a little bit about how I can get into fishing on the River D. Well. I'm glad you asked me that question, Anne, because uh, it's absolutely uh, fundamental to what we do, certainly at the Deep Fishery Board, is trying to get new people into the sport, you know. So uh, over the last few years, we've been we've been running events on the rivers, uh, but we've also been, in the last couple of years, uh, we've been doing more at local trout fisheries and that, just to give people a start, you know. Uh, I think maybe in Colin, we agree with this. I think people sort of graduate to, to salmon fishing from other parts of the, other parts of the sport, you know. So I think the key thing is, is, Getting a rod in their hands, getting them experience the take of a fish, you know, and 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 the the many trout fisheries we have in Aberdeenshire, you know, are just fantastic for that, you know. That's the place to start, you know. It really is. Yeah. So we're gonna um, we're gonna be launching a, a new website called Flyfish Fifty uh, for the start of the new season, and that'll have a full list of all the uh, events and things that we're planning for uh, Aberdeenshire in twenty. 
2021, COVID permitting, of course. Uh, but, you know, we know that there's there's a lot of people really keen to get into this. And I think that's I think that's been more evident this year than any other year because of, mm. uh, you know, COVID and people are just dying to get out and, you know, be be out in nature, you know, doing something rather than being cooped up. So um, if anybody certainly wants to get involved uh, in the Aberdeenshire area, you know, you can get in touch with me at, 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 at the Bee Fishery Board and we'll sort something out. If you don't have any kit, don't worry about it. We'll help you out with that. And and also, as well as Summers, um, <clears throat> you also actually hire equipment as well, don't you? Yes, we do. Yeah. 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 Uh, trout, trout equipment and salmon equipment. Yeah. So rod reel line, waders, net, and most importantly, wading staffs. Very much. Yeah. And life vests, life vests. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lee can't Fine. Them. We can't oh. hire them due to health and safety. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Lee Final, he says, my other half is coming with me in April on the D. She's wanting to try it out. Who knows? She may be a natural. Just to let everybody know, women are very good. They do actually hold the records and they've been holding the records for over 100 years. Sorry, boys, uh, for catching big salmon. Though, can I just say, we haven't been as successful with trout. Um, but um, yesterday, when I was listening to Paul Whitehouse, and we were talking about this before we went on, her, on air, and he said that he wouldn't know where to go if somebody said, I'd like to try fishing. Do you think we need to be doing something as an industry to try when you've got somebody so high profile saying that, that, um, you know, do you think we should be trying even harder as an industry to get that message out there that, yeah, you can come here, et cetera, to try fishing? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, every industry, regardless of what it is, you know, needs needs new customers coming through, yeah. you know, and, and angling certainly is, is characterised by, by, you know, uh, older people, uh, yeah. and you know, one of one of the challenges we have set for ourselves is to, to get more uh, younger people uh, involved. Uh, and that's that's you know, th these are the guys that will come fishing. They'll buy stuff from uh, uh, tackle from Collins shop. They'll buy a day's fishing on the on the D. They'll go and buy a day at Raymore Trout Fishery. You know, and it, this is all about you know keeping the industry ticking over and uh, you know investing in uh, getting new blood in. I think is. Uh, fundamental to everybody's uh, uh, future in, in fishing. Um, but yeah. what we've also got to watch, sorry, is people have this image of fishing sitting by a pond, camping overnight for three days. That's not fishing up this area. That's carp fishing. <laughs> exactly. But everyone's got that image of... Maggots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what fishing is. Yeah. So... Yeah. That's what we've got to try and break down that barrier to say, no, we can move about. It's all about walking. You know, you're actively always doing something. Well, I had Debbie, De Debbie from uh, the Sports and Model Shop over in um, near the Bewley yesterday, and she was there saying to me that they actually go walking on the hill locks and then cast a line on the hill locks and um, maybe take a fish for their for for, for their tea. So uh, it's just a, a a great experience, isn't it, for everybody? Absolutely, you know, and. Getting, getting outside and enjoying nature is, you know, a huge part of fishing, you know, and there's there, there's all sorts of health and well-being elements to it as well, you know. Mm. Uh, you pick up a new skill uh, and it's, you know, it's been proven uh, to be, you know, beneficial to your, your, your uh, mental well-being as well, you know. It's a very relaxing way to spend a few hours. Uh, well, it's interesting this is because Lee Final in. said... He said uh, his wife thought he just sat there and cast and sat there all day. Um, and, um, and and that's what, what he did when he went fishing. And now he she knows he's actually doing more than that. She's now interested. And I know we've talked about young people. Um, and I know one thing that the D have been doing is they've been doing um, a day where young children, young people can go with a member of their family or their parents or or, or basic uncles, aunts, etc. cetera. Um, do, do you find that that's been successful? Yeah, it's, again, it's just, it's just another, 
another means of getting uh, new people on the river, you know, uh, with the events we run and call what we call a big fish, little fish, you know, and so that's just yeah, a youngster and a grown up together. And uh, we've we've run a few of these over the years and they're good. And they're also a good way of getting the grown up into the river. It's not just the little fish that you want to hook, you know, it's the big fish. And we've actually found that we've had the uh, mums and dads come along to uh, with their, their young ones to an event and it's actually them that's taken up fishing. You know, so uh, any means at all to get new people into it. And you're right, Anne, it's not just youngsters, you know, it's people of all ages and backgrounds, you know, and, and you know, I think, you know, as Colin touched on about perception about fishing and that, I mean, fishing's no longer this is the latest sport that it used to be, you know, and, um, you know, you can get salmon fishing on the D, no problem, by booking on Fish D. Uh, you can get access to the trout fisheries, you can go sea fishing. You know, there's there's loads and loads of options there, and it's never been more accessible to, to, to the, the man in the street. And uh, talking of sea fishing, Colleen, um, <coughs> Aberdeen, you are you've got some some wonderful, wonderful water, and uh, uh, we've been talking about cod fever at the moment this this morning, haven't we? Tell us a yeah. tell everybody who haven't hasn't thought about <coughs> sea fishing. Tell us a little bit about cod fever. Round this time of the year, round our coast, it's yeah, some massive cod about. Um, biggest last year off the shore was about an eighteen and a half pound cod. Um, so yeah, don't get you know it can be dangerous at times if there is a big swell on. Um, but anywhere from um, just south of Aberdeen Harbour, from Cove area all the way down to Montrose, our broth fishes really well for cod. Then you've got from Aberdeen North up to about um, uh, Newborough. It's yeah. all sandy and some of the best flat fish fishing you can get. Yeah. It's yeah. So we're around this area. We are littered with some superb fishing. You know whether it's salmon, sea trout, or some cod fishing, dab fishing, mackerel fishing in the summer months. It's yeah. It's yeah. We're spoiled. Well, I actually have people ringing up Fish Pal in the summer months asking to go sea fishing. Um, Because obviously you've got the the guys who are, you know, cod fishing and um, it can be quite cold at the moment if you're going out cod fishing. I I noticed on the homepage of your website, you've got flotation suits, etc. So very bright clothing um purely for the uh for the for the kind of conditions that people are going out in but in summer being on those beaches um because i've been on those beaches in the summer and they are beautiful um how easy is it to to, to go fishing in the summer and you know what kind of stock do you have so so families can go fishing yeah i mean in summer months it's easier fishing Mm-hmm. You don't need as rough ground um, rods or reels or lines. You know, you can just go with a 10-foot spinning rod, yeah. a 10-pound line, single lure, catch some mackerel, put some bait on if you want, catch, you know, bottom feed for some dabs. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, you know, it just depends what you want to fish for. A family of four, get a couple of rods, spinning rods, and away you go. Um, off Aberdeen Beach, you know, take a picnic with you, take your rubbish home with you, of course. Definitely. Uh, and, yeah, you can have some some great fun. A lot of hours fishing, and it costs you nothing. That's the thing with sea fishing. It is all free. Yeah. And, and But the, the, the thing is, is that you just have to go and buy the ragworm, et cetera. And yep. um, that, that's the – and we were talking about that earlier because I – because obviously um, I used to go out with a guy who uh, loved sea fishing and we used to have ragworm wrapped in newspaper at the bottom of the fridge. <laughs> yeah, we get live rag in our, on a Thursday. It should be in just shortly. Um, and yeah, it sells pretty quick at this time of year. It's, I can imagine. Uh, a cod's, uh, cod's delight. And crabs as well, which are all wrapped up, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Crab cart and stuff. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, we've got a massive freezer for three freezers full of frozen bait for the for the guys coming in. So. <laughs> well, Lee's asked as well about obviously I'm going to ask Ross about the sea trout, but the bass salt water fishing, and um, what's that like in your area? 
it's getting better. Um, the guys that do put in the time and effort do pick up a lot of good bass. Uh -huh. um, it is still a secret society up here at the moment. Um, they don't tell anyone where their marks is. Mm -hmm. um, we've got one customer. Um, he's, he's actually from Portugal. And he spent a lot of time and hours fishing. And he says had some cracking bass. Yeah. Up to about eight pound bass off the shore. But he won't tell me where it is. He won't tell anyone. He says, you have to go and find it yourself. So... And he returns all the fish as well, which oh, is good excellent. for him. Good for him. Well, yeah. sea trout fishing, I know the iPhone, um, but we're going to come back about the iPhone on a separate um, live because uh, I really do think the iPhone is one lovely bit of water worth touching on. Um, Ross, talk about, uh, you know, Lee's asked about um, sea trout fishing. Um, tell us a little bit about sea trout fishing on the River Dee. Uh, well, the sea trout fishing really sort of comes into its own uh, in June. That's a sort yeah. of prime month for it, and, and also and, and into July. So uh, there's quite a few uh, local guys that go not turn up for the for the period. You know, we've got very very short nights actually up here in, in June, uh, and there's quite a few folk get uh, get involved in the sea trout uh, scene. Sea trout in the D typically you're talking about two and a half pounds for average. Uh, you get you do get bigger ones. In fact, we had a run of big sea trout a few years ago. Actually, I think the biggest one was about ten pounds. So, you know, they do they do come a bit bigger, but uh, yeah, typically two two three pounds would be a DC trout uh, fishing in June. You know, you'll catch them during the day, but you know, night time's the right time. Um, flies for it, very popular flies for them. Uh, things like, like an editor or a little black and uh, black and blue uh, micro tubes, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, just or any sort of small salmon doubles. Uh, that seems to be uh, what works best. And and this year, talking about obviously the salmon because that's what the D is famous for. Um, your wonderful salmon. July, you actually had um, an amazing year. Something like over eight hundred uh, salmon were caught, weren't they? Yeah, I think it was more like nine hundred we had, but that that was. Uh, I'm nearly there. Was, uh, <laughs> Um, I think I think everywhere in Scotland was actually blessed for the first time in a number of years with a decent grill run. Yeah, you know, and it, it was quite it was quite apparent that we we had we had good numbers, a really good quality grills, uh, and we we really you know we had a really good month in the, in July. It was one of the, one of the best on the river in a long time. Uh, so that's quite heartening. And that suggests you know a good run of grills this year means that that hopefully those those smokes that went out uh, are going to come back as salmon in the spring. You know, so. Uh, they obviously had good survivability for them to come back as grilled. So we just hope the rest of them out there are, have a similar fate and come back as nice chunky salmon in the spring. Fantastic. And also as well as that, I know we've got this this um, ticker tape running along the bottom of this feed about the River D buffs. Um, they were launched this week tell everybody about them because i absolutely i've ordered mine absolutely fabulous tell everybody about them ross please well we uh you know the river d trust is uh you know has, has to raise funds in order to deliver uh on its objectives you know uh it's been a, a long year for all charities and that we've had a few things uh, curtailed as a result of covid but uh we recently ran our, our auction which was a huge success and off the back of that we decided to launch a couple of uh very attractive looking buffs uh, and these are available as you can see in the uh, in the links growing at the bottom of the screen there from our online shop uh, they're 15 pounds they're in two designs there's a there's a tweed style design uh, by uh, Araminta Campbell who uh, is a well-known uh, traditional weaver she grew up at Alpes in the D so that, that tweed is a, is a D specific tweed inspired by a cold February day uh, and the the other uh, design we have is uh, Live River design, which <coughs> features the uh, the fauna of the River Dee, and that was designed by uh, a local artist and trustee uh, Mel Shand. So we have these two buffs on uh, offer at the moment. They're selling like hotcakes. Um, uh, I just did a wee tally up before we come on there. So we've sold over a hundred since Monday night. Um, hundred? No, I tell a lie. One hundred and seventy since Monday night. Uh, so they're going great, yeah. So um, if you want to get something uh, in the stocking for Christmas, follow the link, get your purchases in now. Uh, we'll be posting them out up until the 18th of 
December to catch the Christmas post. So uh, don't wait, you know, and I'll do the old uh, well stocked last plug. <laughs> it will be because I, I and going back to uh, Mel's, sh- her design was created to symbolize the Trust's Million Tree fundraising campaign and features the native flora of Deeside. And I love yeah. I love them because they've all got like the River D um, blended within it as well. And they are yeah. absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, we're really lucky, actually, to have, you know, have the support of, of Mel and uh, Araminta to, to produce these, these designs. You know, they really are good. I mean, mine, I'm sitting waiting for mine to arrive in the post today. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to wearing it. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully the fish pal, the fish pal audience will uh, buy into it. <laughs> please do, please do. Well, um, Sean McGarry has said um, that obviously we've got a couple of D ruffians on today. <laughs> um, obviously, he's one of your fan club, I can see. Um, yeah. Before we go, we have a very, very special announcement. And Ross, you're not aware of this either, are you? No, you're not. No. You're not. So I'm in the dark. Come on, Colleen, what are we announcing? Well, what we're doing is we're doing a prize draw. Um, it's going to be 100 tickets available. It's going to be £10 a ticket for a limited edition Hardy Perfect River D reel. Number 50 wow. reel. And the proceeds are going to go to the Deeb Trust and the Dawn Trust. Well done, Colin. So um, launch right now. Nobody knows about it until now. Available in the shop, over the phone. Um, So, yeah, once they're all gone, hopefully, if they're all sold before Christmas, we'll do a draw on Christmas Day. If not, it will be on the 1st of February at a River D opening, whether it's the main one or a smaller one somewhere else. It will be one of that two dates. Brilliant. So there you go, Ross. You didn't know about that, did you? No, no, I didn't. You know, when you said Colin had a surprise, I, was, I must say I was a bit nervous, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. yes. Um, that's, that's a fantastic gesture, you know, from a, from a tackle shop. It's part of the fabric of, uh, of the D and the Don, uh, another river around here. So, yeah, it's much appreciated, Colin. Yeah, just buy a ticket. Well, oh, yeah, when you go that far, mate, come on. <laughs> well, the ticket prices, everybody, I just want to reiterate that it's £10 a ticket. You can buy it online. You can either, that's on their Facebook page, just click the link and you'll have a telephone number to go and contact the shop to buy it online, but to buy one. £10 ticket and you've got a chance of being in the chance of winning a Hardy Perfect number 50. That's right, isn't it, Colin? Yep, yep. Limit edition, only 100 reels made. That's it. And it's a River D one as well, so which is just fabulous. So exciting. Can I just say, oh, River D damsels have come on. Woohoo! Well done, Colleen. What a generous offer. We love the River D damsels. And and also as well, everybody, is if you've got um, your partner, your wife, relative, female relatives that want to try fishing, check out the River D damsels because they are doing amazing things. They're a group of ladies that go fishing and they also as well, um, they hold events to get people into fishing as well. Love them all and sending you all big hugs, girls. And I'm absolutely loving the, uh, I think, have they been um, uh, modelling the uh, the lovely snoods as well? Uh, no, not the ones in, in the collage, uh, but we've had uh, we've had some of the River D trustees uh, dogs have been modelling them. As well. Okay, <laughs> so they're good, they're good for they're good for Obviously, animals. the ladies have been modelling them, and also they've actually had little dogs modelling them as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, so- we're looking- we are. We've we've actually got James Anderson that popped in from the um, from the Hebrides as well, and uh, got a little love from the River D Damsels girls. Big hugs there, and Sean McGarry, as said, a brilliant, brilliant jester. 
Colleen and Summer's Fish and Tackle. Absolutely brilliant gesture. Um, huge, huge thank you. We are going to be putting this into the Fish Pal newsletter as well. So but people can actually go and purchase. You've got from one to 100 and you can pick whatever number you want at the moment, can't you? Yeah, nobody's picked anything as yet. So because nobody knew about it until now. So it's so exciting <laughs> well done and huge a huge huge thank you guys for coming on this lunchtime to talking about the river d talking about how people can get into fishing what kind of tackle they need if you're in the if you you're coming to d side or any of the area around d side you've got to go to summer's fishing tackle because they're going to look after you everybody and um and a huge huge thank you and uh we'll we'll catch up soon and we'll um we'll be uh are you going to do the um if it's before christmas will you do the um auction well the the ticket choosing live yes yeah we'll be all, everything will be live so there's no uh yeah. <laughs> okay. Can I can I actually say Simon Barnes wants number sixty five, so we're actually selling them online at the moment <laughs> here, and we've got Daniel Wright. Hello, Daniel, one of the wonderful gillies on the river. He said, "I'm sure you can fix it for him to win." <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so there you go. We've already got three ticket sales for you there. Perfect. So there's only ninety seven left, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well take care uh, have a wonderful christmas guys and uh we'll speak to you soon and thank, thank you, you, for you Anne. and thank you everybody yeah. for joining us today and uh tomorrow i should be on the river tweed if i'm not on the river tweed tomorrow i'll be back on monday on the river tweed so uh huge thank you everybody and uh oh my guests fabulous fabulous so uh take care everybody <laughs>